Today, we're gonna talk about building a modern entryway table. This could be something like a side table, a sofa table. It could be all sorts of different things. There's a bunch of different pieces of the build that are great techniques that you can use to apply to all sorts of different furniture pieces, like set of nightstands, a coffee table, all sorts of different things like that, where you're building a box with mitered corners, with hard woods. This is a great project if you're a beginner and you've got a couple tools that you can do things like milling and working with hardwoods, anything along those lines. There's a bunch of different tips and tricks I'll walk you through along the way. A bunch of different mistakes that are common mistakes you might make, things that I definitely made in the process that I will show you how to fix as well. And if you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting a bunch of different woodworking tips and tricks and build videos that you can follow along with that will help you become a better woodworker and just help you figure out different ways you can enjoy building furniture more. Let's get to building. All right, today we're working with some hard maple that I had already cut down on my chop saw before bringing it over to the jointer. Over here, we're getting one side flat and one side square, as my buddy Brandon does right here for us. Next up, run it through the planer, mill it up, get everything down to a nice uniform thickness. Something I like to do is measure the front and back of each board so that I can get as much width of it as I can. This way, if there's an edge that I don't like as much, then I usually have a little more room to cut it off after I get things glued up or right when I'm about to glue everything up. Use that blue spreader that God gave you and get everything lined up. Typically, if I'm just working with small panels, I, I will not use biscuits or dominoes just because I'm able to get the alignment good enough without any errors because if I can get everything milled nice and flat, it works out just fine. So for bigger tabletops and things, I definitely always use something for alignment, just less sanding in the end. Check for level underneath and watch that nice glue squeeze out. Once you pull it out of the clamps, it is time for the fun part, get the sanding. So we get the glue off, we get everything sanded to a rough sand and chop some miters. For these miters right here, I'm using the track saw. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this, but track saw was the initial method that I went with. And as you'll see in a little bit, I had made somewhat of a mistake here, which we'll get to. We're doing everything at a 45, um, or what's supposed to be a 45. And if your track saw doesn't cut all the way through, what you'll have to do is take something to clean up those edges. I just used a block plane. You can use a chisel or sandpaper or whatever you want just to get those miters nice and clean. That's embarrassing. All right, now, oh my gosh, just had to, what the heck? All right, measure out each side. Um, I went with like two to four inches. I just kind of pick arbitrary numbers. I'm not super specific on that. I would recommend measuring from each side on this. That way, if you have one of your panels flipped around, it won't be an issue when you're doing your glue ups. Check for depth, make sure you're not gonna plunge all the way through. You can use biscuits here. I use dominoes because that's what I've got. You could do dowels. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Take all your panels, make your marks, and then transfer those lines with a square or something so that you have a better reference line with your cutter or your dowel or jig or whatever you use. And plunge, 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 drill the holes and swipe and flip and drop and continue. I am just doing a test fit here and during this test fit as you can see as I'm trying to punch these panels into place I realized that my miters were not tight so my solution which is probably what I should have done in the first place was to take them back to the table saw where I know I can get a good true 45 I could have had a good true 45 with the track saw but I am an idiot and did not check for square or for proper 45 so here we are doing everything twice learn from my mistakes making fresh cuts shout out to my buddy brandon for helping with the longer panels and i have to redrill the dominoes because when i cut that little bit off it made my alignments off with the dominoes so yeah that was fun so when i drill all these dominoes do your best not to cringe and understand that nobody's ever going to see these dominoes. All these extra holes. I know it looks rough. Stop looking at it. It's fine. I'm just sanding off the lines here. 
and then applying the almighty green tape. I would highly recommend taking the time to put green tape on the inside of your miters just because sanding those inside corners from glue squeeze out is very difficult and it just looks better this way. All right, time for the glue up. One of the more stressful glue ups I've done in my day. I tried to use some corner clamps here. It didn't quite go as planned and I ended up just using bar clamps to pull everything together. Uh, I highly recommend using a extend glue that gives you a little bit of extra working time for something like this so that you can get it all adjusted just right and it was crazy but it worked all right pull the clamps off flip that box up and look at the fine work that you have now done you have made a box a large box with 45 degree angles yeah peel that tape off Ooh, peel 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 Look at those clean lines. All right, and back to the fun part. Oh, sanding, our favorite. Okay, this is a little trick that I like to do. If I have miters that aren't perfectly tight, you just spread some glue on the edge and sand it while it's still wet. Uh, what this does is it pushes sawdust created from the sandpaper down into the gaps and makes like a glue sanding wood filler, which works really well. If you still have gaps afterwards, just repeat the process. And right here, I went with a eighth inch chamfer bit, and you'll have a little extra left in the corner, so you will have to chisel that out. And now we have made it to finish prep. I always start by vacuuming off the surface before taking an air compressor and blowing all the dust off. It just helps prevent less dust into the air, and I try to take care of my lungs. It's important, you know? After my final sanding and mix up my favorite product, Ruby on Monaco. This stuff works great. It's super easy to apply. It's hard to mess up. It looks just, it just looks nice and it smells pretty good too. So I highly recommend it. You literally wipe it on, you let it sit, you buff it, then you wipe it off and it looks incredible. I use a white scotch Bright pad for the corners and then use a squeegee to spread it on the large surfaces. And yeah, if you've got extra left over, just apply it and freshen up some of the stuff in your shop, like on your tool wall or whatever you want, as you can see I'm doing here, because you don't want to let that sweet, sweet, sweet stuff go to waste. And we've done it. That's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the project. See you next time.